receptor tyrosine kinases are an essential uh, tyrosine kinase that are involved in cell signaling and they're involved in a bunch of different things. So if we look at protein tyrosine phosphorylation as a mechanism of signal transduction, we can see that these enzymes are, they, they, are phosph they phosphorylate specific tyrosine residues on some protein substrates. And protein tyrosine phosphorylation is a mechanism for signal transduction that appeared in the evolution of all multicellular organisms. We, there's over 90 different protein tyrosine kinases in the human genome. So we will write that here, 90 different uh, RTKs in human genome. So you can see they are very important, they're very diverse. Uh, each one of these kinases are involved in the regulation of growth, division, differentiation, uh, survival, uh, attachment to the extracellular matrix, and migration of the cells. Expression of mutant tyrosine, uh, protein tyrosine kinases that cannot be regulated and are continually active can lead to uncontrolled cell division and the development of cancer. So you can see that these are very important and, and very, uh, it's a, a very current area of cell biology and biochemistry and genetic research right now. For example, I'll just say the one type of leukemia occurs in cells that contain an unregulated version of the protein tyrosine kinase that's called ABL. So protein tyrosine kinases can be divided into two groups. So there are receptor protein tyrosine kinases, which I will draw right there. And then there are non-receptor protein tyrosine kinases, which are cytoplasmic uh, kinases, which I won't be talking about here, I want to talk about ligand mediated dimerization. So right here is your ligand mediated. So dimerization just means two individual things coming together to form one. And then on this side, I'm going to talk about um, receptor mediated dimerization. So receptor mediated which comes down here. So in this type, there is a bivalent ligand. So if we have this little ligand molecule right here, it looks like this. So it has a little ligand on that side and then it's attached to another one on this side. And that will bind to these receptor portions right here, these domains for, for receiving this ligand, this specific ligand, and it will bring them together to activate this tyrosine kinase. So the single ligand will bind two receptors at the same time. And these receptors come together to form an active dimer. So this is the inactive state, which I should write out. Just This is your inactive state. And this is your active state. So on this side, we have our receptor-mediated uh, dimerization, which is a monovalent ligand. So once again, if we jar ligand, you're going to have one binding to this one and one binding to this one. So the two ligands will bind to different receptors and then they will come together and have our receptor mediated dimerization where they join together. And then after this, this step, well this step right here, the dimerization is called transautophosphorylation. So I will try to write that out here for you. It is trans autophosphorylation. So it is a mouthful, but this dimerization, that is what it's called, trans autophosphorylation. Um, the section of the receptor with kinase ability will put the phosphate group on the other receptor, so they are swapping phosphates. So right here, if we have little phosphates Right there, we have our phosphate, and we have our phosphate here. They will swap phosphates like that. And then now, the regardless of whether it's ligand-mediated or receptor-mediated, so the same thing is happening over here, just imagine, the uh, once dimerized, it will go through the same mechanism. So once it is active, activated and this is, it is in its dimerized state, it will be go through the same type of mechanism. So the trans autophosphorylation is the kinase activity of one receptor phosphorylates the tyrosine residues of the other dimer right there. 
and then you have some sort of signal trans, uh, transmission. So the dimer is a recruiting station and then other proteins will come to it. So on this one, I'm going to draw some of the examples here. So you might have something, you have your little phosphate groups here, pretend this is a phosphate and this is a phosphate, and then you have some sort of protein that's been recruited on both of these that you want to activate because this, this signal wanted to activate maybe this kinase or something that'll lead to a transcription of some sort. So a, a transcription factor might activate, let's say, CREB. So CREB is unrelated to this video, but just to give you an illustration, CREB is something that is involved in a lot of different things, but one thing is long-term potentiation in your brain. So when you remember things, you often have what is called long-term potentiation, which is just long-term synapse formation and strengthening of a synapse. So if this is your little synapse here, this is the end of your neuron, and here is your connection here, you might phosphorylate the CREB, which leads to these things called NMDA receptors and AMPA receptors being all over the place here that mediate release of different sort of excitatory or maybe inhibitory neurotransmitters, but this, this synapse will be strengthened. So that's the type of thing that this, this, uh, this phosphorylation, this dimerization might activate. So in the next uh, couple of videos, I will talk about different types of adapter proteins and the four different classes of proteins that have domains that interact with these receptor tyrosine kinases.